YouTube, boy back once again with another sport topic, and today we're going to talk some football, Houston Texan football. Today, we're going to talk about the Houston Texans are in a prime position. They're in a perfect spot to do exactly what they want and need to do to improve this offense. We're going to talk about, we're going to break it down before we get in there, like I'm telling you before me, if you're liking the content, make sure you're liking the channel, make sure you're watching all the videos, you comment all the videos, you liking all the videos, you're sharing all the videos on all social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, any type of social media platform you use, make sure you're sharing them same social media platforms. Also, follow me on social media as well, the link in the description below, we're still in the race to get the 6,000 subscribers, you know what that means, I need you to tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tell another friend, to tell some more friends, and put them on with the channel so the channel get growing and growing and growing really really appreciate that still in the race to get to the 6,000 subscribers and i can't do that without y'all i need y'all to do your part so i need you to like share and subscribe and let's get this channel growing and growing really really appreciate that now i put a poll up the other day on my channel asking what do y'all think the Texans should do to upgrade the receiver position should they make a trade for a certain receiver should they sign a certain receiver or should they actually go out there and draft a receiver in the first round and majority of the people, I think it was like at 39%, 40%, the last time I checked the poll, had us drafting a receiver. And we all seen what happened um, this past weekend with the NFL Combine, that the receivers really had a day. They showed up and showed out the NFL Combine. And that puts me in a position to think that the Texans are at a prime position where they're drafting at a prime position to make a very huge impact and get an impactful player on the offensive side of the football, a receiver that should go out there and help out C.J. Stroud. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you guys know my top five receivers that we're able to get in that position where the Houston Texans are drafting. We're not talking about the guys in the top 15 like Marv and Malik Neighbors and stuff like that because those guys are going top five, top 10, stuff like that. So we're talking about the guys in the section where the Texans will be drafting it. We'll talk about I'm going to put my list in my top five guys and receivers that we draft in that position. And also, I'm going to tell you all exactly what the Texans could and should do after I give you all my personal list of who I believe are the top five receivers in that spot. So... I'm going to start my list off like this. At number five, I got A.D. Mitchell, receiver at UT. Kid was 6'2", uh, 205 pounds, ran a 4'3", 4 4 in the 40, uh, very fast. Uh, was able to get open quite often out there at UT uh, with a decent route runner. Used his hands real well. Didn't let the ball come to him. Didn't do a lot of body catches. Was able to catch the football with his hands. I'm thinking the guy was probably going to be a late first early second round pick, I thought that going into the combine and even after leaving the combine, I feel the same way. He's still a guy that's probably going to be a late first round pick, potentially an early second round pick. That's why I kind of view him as, and again, the reason why I have him five, it actually is no slight to him. Because actually, I think he's a very, very good receiver. There's actually no slight, no disrespect to him. But it's just because the guys I have in front of him, I just think that they're just either slightly above or very much above. And this really goes to, it's more credit to the guys on this list and that we have a real deep receiver draft class this year. And number four is Troy Franklin, receiver out of Oregon. This kid was 6'2", 176 pounds and ran a 4'4", a 4'4", in the 40. Uh, a guy who got open all the time is a very, very good route runner. I think that he probably... Of all the guys in the draft, and not just these guys right here that I have done this, just these top five, these five guys right here. I mean, overall throughout the whole draft, he's one of the best guys that gets separation and could potentially be the best guy that gets separation. When you watch this tape, the dude just gets back in the backfield. He gets busy out there. Like, he actually gets out there. Every time you watch tape, people are always chasing after him. He uses his feet real well, has very, very good feet. I, I did think that he would probably run a better 40. So that 4 4 that 4 4 1 is kind of disappointing me. I thought he'd probably run a 4 3 similar to what AD ran. So I like that's the upgrade that AD had over him because I'm surprised that he's not as fast as AD. He's actually slower. But again, same thing with last year with Tank. Tank, I think, he ran a 4 5. And you see how he was able to, because he's such a very good route runner and good with using his feet, he was able to get open a lot. I think that Troy Franklin will be able to get open a whole lot on the NFL level. I've seen it in college, so I think he uses feet real well. So, I mean, his four-time disappointing what I thought it was going to be. And also, I do think he needs to get his weight up a little bit because he's 6'2", only 176 pounds at the, at the height of 6'2". He's only with like a couple pounds, five pounds more, five to ten pounds more than, uh, um, than Tank is. I think it's ten. I think uh, Tank was around like 165. So, like nine, ten pounds more than Tank is, and he has – <laughs> he, like he's like six two and tank is five eight five five eight five nine so he's taller than tank 
but is slightly, uh, slightly a little bit more, weighs more than him. So you would want him to put on a little bit more, a little bit more weight. So that might be a concern too on the next level. But as far as getting separation, getting back in the backfield, I mean, oh, not in the backfield, but getting the secondary. I'm sorry, after getting in the secondary, he he liked that. He really is like that. And I think he's a guy who uh, potentially is going to be a late first round pick. I don't think he's going to make it to the second round. He could potentially make it to the second round, but I don't think he's really going to make it to the second round. The guy who I had actually as my number three for the majority of this season uh, like th throughout this process, he dropped down the fours because of what happened going into the combine. But I do think that he is a guy who um, is definitely going to be there and able for the Houston Texans to possibly pick up. My number three guy is probably the guy who probably had the best day out of everybody. And that's Xavier Worthy, receiver out of UT. Uh, kid was 5'11", uh, 165 pounds, and broke the record for a 4-2-1 to 40. Just the boy be scatting. Just plain and simple, the boy is fast. And I think that he elevated himself from being a fringe, kind of like AD, a fringe, possibly first, maybe a, a early, late first, early second round guy. He's going to be a first round pick. Because he's not getting past Kansas City. The reason why I say he's going to be a first-round pick, he's not getting past Kansas City. Now, he might go before Kansas City, but he's not getting past Kansas City at pick 32. He's just not. They're going to look at him, and they're going to see basically seeing him running a 4-2-1, which broke the record, broke John Ross's record for a 4-2-2, for a 4-2-1 in the 40, going into it perceivably as the probably the fastest guy in the NFL, maybe behind Tyreek Hill, right behind Tyreek Hill, or possibly even at the same speed or potentially even faster than Tyreek Hill, who the Kansas City Chiefs had, and they let go because they didn't want to pay him $30 million a year, basically get him for free. Because he's under team control. And the reason why you want to draft him in the first round is because that way you got him under team control for five years. You got the fifth year option. Not, not just for anybody in the second round unless it gets four years. That's the most that contract gets four years. A guy in the draft in the first round automatically gets that fifth year option. He, so basically you're telling me that you can pair him up with Patrick Mahomes for the next five years basically for free with that type of speed. He's not getting past the Kansas City Chiefs at 32. That's why I said he has elevated himself to be a first round pick. Again, the guy gets like he like, the guy gets into the secondary with ease. And anytime the football touches his hands, he is gone. He is scatting. He is making all type of moves. And unlike John Ross, he actually can play football. The kid can actually run routes. Another guy who uses his hands real well, catch the football real well. Able to get open, able to get separation because of his speed. And then even when he's in the phone booth, he's taking off on you. He's able to do all type of all type of exotic things from a formation. I, I can see Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes could wait to get him inside the offense. So, again, that's why I don't think he's going to get past the third, pick 32. He's not going to fall out into the second round. But, again, I think he's the third-rated guy because of who I have at 2-1. Uh, and and so, I think Xavier Worthy is the third-rated guy as far as my receivers. Number two. Brian Thomas Jr., the receiver out of uh, LSU. Kid is 6'3", 209 pounds, ran a 4-3-3. Hey, he's tall, he's fast, he, he, he made all type of incredible catches. His only issue was that possibly, the, at the very least, the second best receiver in this draft, and some people might even think that uh, Malik Davis is the best receiver in this draft, was playing opposite him. And he wasn't able to get shine. And I think he finds himself in a situation like A.J. Brown was, like uh, uh, um, Justin Jefferson was, and also like DeAndre Hopkins was. When you talk about guys who played against, play on the opposite side of another receiver who got a little bit more shine. Hop talked about all the time that Sammy Watkins, when they was in Clemson, everybody was talking about Sammy Watkins and people really treat him like the redheaded stepchild. Um, Justin Jefferson, people, we knew everybody knew about Jamar Chase, but people really didn't know about Justin Jefferson until he got to the league and he showed you exactly that, hey, he might have been the best receiver, even though uh, Jamar Chase is better than LSU, Justin Jefferson might be the better receiver on the NFL level, like Hop was a better receiver than Sammy Watkins was on the NFL level. And the same thing with A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf. Everybody talked about D.K. Metcalf at Ole Miss. And then A.J. Brown's coming to the league and showed you that he's the best receiver out of those two. So that's why I think Brian Thomas can end up being. I think he's a guy who basically was just playing along Malik Neighbors, and that really was really was hurting his draft stock. I don't know if he will actually be there when the Texans draft, but if he is on the board, he might be a top prospect. Again, I have him at number two. And the only reason why I have him at number two because I think he's a very, very good NFL, a very, very good NFL prospect, a potential good NFL receiver, is because who I have at number one. Now, 
My number one receiver is Keon Coleman, the receiver out of Florida State. Now, the kid is 6'3", 213 pounds, and I know he only ran a 4'6'1", and I know that's the slowest time of all the receivers that looked at to go into the first or the second round, but I don't care about that. Hopkins ran a bad 40 time. He didn't have a good 40 time. This kid here is a baller. He's an absolute playmaker. He's an absolute number one receiver, and the kid got star written all over him. Shout out to my boy Wise, because Wise was the first person to tell me about him back in um, late September. And by middle of October, I'm like, yeah, this kid is it. This, this is who I want the Texans draft. This kid has number one receiver on the next level written all over him. He is an absolute NFL star. This guy, right, he's able to, the way he's able to catch the football, the way he's able to high point the ball, catch it at his highest point, the way he's able to bully DBs when he's running his routes, they, he's able to use his strength and his size for, for leverage and for advantages and things like that. So he looks like he's going to be an absolute playmaker on any level, collegiate level and the NFL. I don't care what his 40 time is. I don't care. What I've seen on the tape supersedes what I see on the, on the 40 time. I don't care how he runs uh, when he's running on, on, on a track. What I see on the field takes over all that. And not only is he my number one prospect here, he's my number one receiver prospect, period, outside of, obviously, Marvin Harrison and Malik Neighbors. I think those two are the best two receivers in the, in, the, uh, in the NFL draft, and both of them should be top five picks. But I do have him over Rome. I have Keon Coleman over Rome out of Washington. I just do. I know some people might disagree with that, and that's perfectly fine. But my personal opinion, I think that he's the third best receiver total in this draft behind um, like I said, behind Malik Neighbors and behind Marvin Harrison Jr. Those are the number, those are one and two. I think that Keon Coleman is the third best receiver, period, in this draft. I think he's over Rome, even though I think Rome is going to go in the top 15. And this guy right here will be here with the Houston Texans draft. Now, you know what I keep on saying with the Houston Texans draft, and I have yet to say at pick 23. Because I don't know if the Houston Texans are going to pick at pick 23. And shout out to my boy Big B, because he said this a couple months ago. He was looking at the Texans draft pick and saying, hey, man, we have a fourth round pick. We don't have a fifth and we don't have a sixth. We don't pick again until we pick in the seventh round. I can see that. I, I, I can see the Texans jumping back in the first round, moving back and able to get some extra draft capital. So, and, and I actually tend to agree with him because the Texans pick at pick 23. They have a, uh, have a second round pick, a third round pick, two fours. Their last four is at pick 128. Their next pick is not to pick 235, 236, I'm sorry. Pick 236. That's over 100 picks in between their fourth round pick and their seventh round pick. So I think the Texans potentially will end up trading back if at least three of these five guys are on the board. If, and again, I don't know if the Texans really will go after Keon Coleman because going by with uh, um, D'Amico Ryan said he wants a guy to get separation, good on third downs. Even though I think Keon Coleman is the best prospect outside of Marv and outside of uh, uh, um, Malik Neighbors, and I have him rated uh, rated above these other four these other four guys. He's not the best at getting separation when it comes to these other guys get separation better than Keon Coleman. I just think that Keon Coleman is an absolute playmaker, and I think he's a number one receiver. But these other guys get separation, and I do believe if any of these other guys, if three of these five guys are on the board, that the Texans could potentially trade back. You got Green Bay that has a fifth pick. They got two seconds. They have a third. I mean, if they have two seconds, they have two thirds, and they have a fourth and a fifth. They pick at pick 25. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers pick at pick 26. They have a second, a third, a fourth, and a sixth. The Arizona Cardinals pick at pick 27, which is our original pick. They have pick, They have a second round pick. They have three thirds. One of their thirds is our original third. They have a fourth round, and they have two fives, which one of the fives is our original five. The Buffalo Bills at pick 28 have a second round pick, a third round pick, a fourth round pick, and two fives. I think the Texans won't trade no further back than pick 28 and probably in between 25 and 20, 28 with the Bills. So I can see them either trading with pick 20, uh, 25 with Green Bay Packers or all the way back no further than pick 28 with the Buffalo Bills if three to four of these guys left on the board. I don't know if Brian Thomas is going to be there. I think he could, but I don't know if he's going to be there. I think Keon Coleman's going to be there. I think Troy Franklin's going to be there. I think uh, A.D. Mitchell's going to be there. 
I don't know about Xavier Worthy because of how he looked at the combine. If somebody wants to get stupid and just jump up and draft him no matter what. And I'm not saying it'd be a, a dumb pick to draft him. I'm just saying they'll like you know if, if the Kansas City Chiefs just want to trade a whole bunch of stuff to get up in the first round, to get above the Texans, to get above the Buffalo Bills, to get above the Baltimore Ravens and things like that. And again, I know Buffalo might end up drafting receiver because they're probably gonna lose Gabe Davis. They might even be trying to get rid of Stephon Diggs. So they could be in the market for a receiver. And I know if they're in the market for a receiver, why would the Texans trade back if the Texans are in the market for a receiver? Well, if the Buffalo Bills called the Texans and said, hey, we want to draft receiver Keon Coleman. The Texans don't have no interest in drafting Keon Coleman because they probably want Xavier Worthy, a Brian Thomas, a Troy Franklin, A.D. Mitchell, so I can get my guy and still able to get extra draft picks on top of that. I see the Texans absolutely doing that. And I know people say, what about the Bills just lying? The, the, there ain't no NFL general manager doing that. Ain't no, if, if a general manager asks us what you're going to do with this draft pick, they're going to be honest. Because if they buy, they can forget ever making a trade ever again because no team is ever going to trust them again. So they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. And shout out to my boy Wink. Wink said the same thing too as far as we, well, he brought this up when we were watching the, the, the combine that I can see the Texans actually double dipping and drafting a receiver in the first round and potentially drafting a receiver later on to opposite whatever they draft. So say they draft Xavier Worthy, a guy who's just straight fast. They go out there and draft the kid, uh, Jerry Rice kid, possibly in the fifth round. That's the reason why they would need to get a fifth in the third, uh, get a fifth round pick to move back. They like to get an additional fifth in that mix, so they can draft another receiver later on and load up a receiver. So I actually agree with that, just like I agree with Big B, uh, um, sentiment about the Texans drafting a uh, trade back. And I think that's actually the best solution. If all five of these guys are on the board, or at the very least three of these fives on the board, I agree with Big B. That the Texans, the smart move for the Texans is to trade back in any capacity. If it's pick 25 with Green Bay, if it's pick 26 with Tampa Bay, if it's pick 27 with Arizona Cardinals, which is kind of weird because that's your original pick, but it's a hey, sometimes it goes like that. Or pick 28 with the Buffalo Bills. I can see them drafting back and picking up an additional third a fourth or a fifth or something to that notion to add to add more pieces because from pick two, uh, 128 to pick 236, over 100 players are going to get drafted in that span and you can't do nothing about it because you don't have a fifth or a sixth round pick. And that's a lot of talent. And again, this draft being so low there, receiver, like Wink said, you might do need to go in there and double dip and do get multiple receivers. Now, I think the Texans will probably say, I think they're probably targeting Brandon Thomas, Brian Thomas, I'm sorry, uh, it's a tar targeting Brian Thomas, potentially either, either Xavier Worthy or Troy Franklin. I don't know about A.D. Mitchell, kid out of Mo City. They might, want, they might want to go after him. I have no idea. But I do think it's between Brian Thomas, Xavier Worthy, and Troy Franklin. From basing off of what D'Amico Ryan said, guys that get separation, Guys are good on third down and guys with good speed. Judging by what he said, I think those three would be the prime three. Me personally, like I said, I would love for us to draft Keon Coleman, but we already have Nico Collins and they kind of in the same kind of in the same realm a little bit. I do think that Keon has more of a star factor than Nico has, but Nico is faster. And Nico is faster. So we'll just have to see exactly how that go along. And I'm gonna do a poll. So y'all can, so can decide. I'm going to post up another poll, but this one I'm going to post up of each of these receivers, and y'all let me know. Y'all vote and tell me who would y'all rather the Texas draft in the draft, it's, if it's at pick 23 or if it's even later. I'm going to put up, I'm put a post, so I'm going to let y'all decide. But make sure y'all comment, y'all like, uh, like the video, y'all click this bell to get more videos. I'll holler.